I want to talk about the journey of recovery. This is the timeline towards successful recovery. People call me up all the time and they say, I went to an AA meeting and it didn't work. I respond, you went to one AA meeting? That would have to be a really powerful AA meeting to work towards successful recovery. Successful recovery requires being part of a plan. It has to take time. There's no one thing that's going to stop an addiction. Um, a lot of people, they try, I'm going to go see a psychiatrist. I'm going to go see a therapist. While those things are fantastic and I support psychiatry and therapy, if people just schedule one psychiatrist visit for next month, that's not going to work. We need an intense plan in the beginning to help somebody recover. I'm 16 years sober. I still go to 12 step meetings. So 16 years down the road, I'm still in recovery. I still do things two or three times a week for my recovery. I want to boil down this just a little bit for where you're at today and what we have to do with, with your um, addicted person. I want today, I want you to think about a plan for a year. I know that sounds intimidating and that sounds like a lot, but we have to get your addicted loved one over the year threshold. So when we're talking today, that's really what we're, we're benchmarking is creating a plan to help your individual out. If we sort of boil down one year, let's go down to the very most important. The first 90 days of recovery are the hardest. If you go to uh, an AA meeting, there's a, a saying in the meetings, 90 meetings in 90 days. We know we have to get somebody uh, in a real structured program for 90 days. So starting today, starting with your intervention, we're really focused on these first three months. Boil it down more than that, the first 30 days. Depending on where your, your loved one is, they probably need detox, detox being uh, any good treatment center, any good 28-day residential treatment center has detox a part of it. Detox, people always ask me how long does detox last? Detox depends really on the drugs that they were using the day before, the week before they go into detox. Typical detox is four to five days. Detox is a higher level of medical care. That's medical doctors, um, taking blood pressure, monitoring uh, symptoms of withdrawal. They might use medications to help somebody detox. Detox is in those first few days is just bringing somebody down to zero drugs and alcohol in their system. Once we get somebody through detox, we've got a problem. The, I always tell people the, the drinker in somebody's mind, the desire to use is still very, very strong. So once we go to detox, we have to have somebody in a real a safe environment for the next couple of weeks until that desire to drink has settled down a lot. In a, sort of the easiest way to do this is a residential treatment program, 28 days, because we've got detox on site. We know that they're going to be safe. We know that they can't use so that we can get through that very difficult period of time, the first two weeks. Towards the, the end of re rehab, after 30 days, or in the third week of uh, residential treatment, oftentimes you see a big shift in the person, kind of the old person is back. And that's when families, they're like, wow, I just spoke to him and he just, he sounds great. But think about that. You know, we get the old person back in the third and fourth week of rehab, and then we're sending them right back home. We're worried about this adage, people, places, and things. If we take somebody right out of residential treatment and put them right back, kind of, I say, in the scene of the crime, right back home, very high chance of relapse. That concept in their mind that the associations that they have with drinking is still very strong. For non-drinking people, I, you can identify with the feeling of anxiety. Kind of in the, the second month, people still have a, a lot of anxiety. It's probably cravings. It's probably a desire to drink. So we need to have a structured program really for months two and months three. We gotta get this person past this 90 day mark, past that, that stabilization, that anxiety that they have. There's other options after 90 day residential treatment. We might use sober living. That's living in a, a community environment. 
with, uh, with like-minded people that are in early recovery. Another term that's important is IOP, intensive outpatient treatment. That's usually lasts about six weeks. So if we can put somebody in residential treatment, sober living, IOP, we're carrying them across that 90 day threshold. Once we get somebody in 90, across 90 days, I hate to say it, we're not done, but their chances of recovery are really, really high at that point. After the 90 day mark, that's kind of when people are in their, their maintenance of their recovery. They might be, hopefully at this point, they've got a sponsor, they're going to 12 step meetings, they're engaged with some sort of recovery um, for the, well, really the continuation of, of their lives. That's what we're talking about here, recovery for the rest of their life. We just have to really focus on this first year. We have to create a significant structure for what they do in that first year. Mm -hmm.